In this session, we are going to look into processes, threads and need for synchronization. The brown box here represents an operating system and the white boxes represent processes. The processes live inside the ecosystem of operating system. The processes are, are made of code which are represented by red boxes here and data which are represented by blue boxes. So both these processes have code and data. Code operates on data. The processes have this edge called process boundaries and both these processes are separated from each other by these process boundaries. These process boundaries prevent the processes from accessing each other's data. That is the code here can access only data here in this blue box. The code here cannot access data in this blue box. Similarly, the code here can access co data in this blue box but cannot access data in this blue box here and that, that is called the separation, the process boundaries. If the processes do have to communicate or access or provide each other's data, exchange each other's data, there are mechanisms provided by operating system. Those are called inter-process communication or IPC mechanisms and some of the mechanisms, such mechanisms available in Windows or clipboard, pipes, RPC, CAM and TCP IP. This operating system also controls the hardware components such as CPU, RAM, storage, input devices, output devices, etc. So, so all the access of the processes to these hardware components goes through operating system and is coordinated and controlled by the operating system. The example of two processes is for example you have Microsoft Word and Microsoft Excel running at the same time and that is an example of two processes. You can copy data from a cell of a spreadsheet and then uh, paste it into the Word document or vice versa. That is the data exchange happening between two, pro two processes through clipboard mechanism. That is an example of inter-process communication. Now, the threads are represented by yellow ellipses here. This process has three threads. The thread accesses part of the code or runs part of the code and accesses part of the data. The thread actually has or could if it wanted to it could access any of the data in the blue in this blue box of the process data but typically it only accesses part of the data. Each thread has a separate stack and each thread has separate little data box called thread, thread local storage called TLS here. There is nothing preventing from this thread accessing TLS or stack of another thread if it has a reference to that block. Typically the threads won't have a reference to each other's TLS or stack but if they do by some way they could pretty much access that data and there is nothing preventing uh, them from doing that in the operating system. Threads pretty much can access any of the data that is shown by blue box here. So that is where the need for synchronization or thread synchronization comes into picture because the thread could mess up each other's data. And let me show that to you by an example. So here these two ellipses represent two different threads. One is a bill payment thread and other one is wire transfer thread. They are operating on a data object called account object which resides in the blue data part and the account has starting balance, balance of 1000. There is a bill payment to be made of $100 and there is a wire transfer to be made of $500. So total $600 are supposed to be spent out of this $1000 and ending balance is supposed to be $400. But I will show you in a minute, in this case ending balance could be either 900 
or 500 also which is pretty good for the for the client but not very good scenario for the bank and I will explain you in a minute how it will happen suppose both these transactions almost come simultaneously and these threads get launched almost at the same time and both of them get the balance at the same time so both of them get a balance starting balance of thousand and then this thread subtracts hundred out of it and writes 900 back this thread subtracts 500 out of it and writes 500 back now depending on which thread wrote its ending balance second that is the amount that will be updated as ending balance so if this thread got chance to write 900 first and this thread wrote 500 later the ending balance will be 500 on the other hand if this thread got chance to write 900 first uh, I mean 500 first and this thread wrote 900 later the ending balance will be 900 so both of these will be wrong balances only correct balance of 400 will happen only if either of this thread completes this entire get subtract and update operation and then the second thread starts it its set of those those operations so let's say this thread gets 1000 subtracts 100 and writes 900 back then this thread gets 900 subtracts 500 and writes 400 back or this thread gets 1000 first subtracts 500 writes 500 back and then this thread gets 500 subtracts 100 and writes 400 back only in this that case the ending balance will be correctly 400 dollars and a way to achieve that is through thread synchronization mechanisms let me show how that works so these are pretty much the th same threads and same data object except for one difference there is additional object called lock and what is happening here is each of these threads are acquiring lock before proceeding with their get subtract and update operations and the peculiarity of this lock is that once a thread acquires a lock another thread cannot acquire it until the thread which acquired the lock first releases the lock so if this thread acquires lock first and then this tri thread tries to acquire it will wait until this thread releases the lock and then only it will get the lock so in this case only one thread will acquire lock and go into get balance first so let's say this thread gets a chance first to acquire lock and gets a balance of thousand it will subtract hundred and write 900 back and then only release the lock and then this thread will get the lock and the balance it will get will be 900 and it will subtract 500 and write 400 back on the other hand if th this thread gets lock first it will get thousand it will subtract 500 and write 500 back and then this thread will get lock then it will get 500 and subtract 100 and update 400 so in either of the case uh, uh, independent of which thread gets the lock first the ending balance will be correctly 400 and this is called thread synchronization this locking is one of the thread synchronization mechanisms provided by the operating system there are various other thread synchronization mechanisms which we are going to look into in subsequent sessions I hope this session gave you pretty good idea about processes, thread and synchroni synchronization.